Kate's car breaks down, and at a gas station she runs into Cassidy, who's trying the jewelry scam that Sawyer showed her. She's not very good at it, and the guy is about to call the cops, which Kate can't have, so she plays along with Cassidy. Later, she tells Cassidy her whole story and says she wants to see her mother. Cassidy agrees to help because of her experience with Sawyer. Cassidy approaches the house, and I say it's her because the camera work is so obviously designed to not let us see her face that it's clear from the start what's going on. It's also Kate can scope out the security around her mother, and then Cassidy throws soup on her at the restaurant, this being the days before she took up throwing Sazeracs at people. This is so Kate can talk to her in the bathroom and ask her why she called the cops on her. And the answer is... And you can't help who you love, Catherine. And for good or bad... I loved him. You know, I'm really not an easy person to offend. I'll say things are offensive, but it's usually more of an intellectual judgment. Like, I can understand why someone else would be offended by it. But this really gets to me. What they're saying here is that women in abusive relationships are happy and deserve what they're getting. There's no interpretation there. That is exactly what Kate's mother just said. So you can add this to the crappy messages that can be taken from the show. And then Cassidy says she's still in love with Sawyer, too, like they really wanted to pound this horrible moral in as much as possible. Kate attacks Juliet as she comes in the room, to which Juliet has the nerve to get offended and say she was only bringing Kate a sandwich. Because what possible reason could Kate have to think the others might want to hurt her? The next day, Locke comes in with an injured hand and eye, so at least they're acknowledging that there was a cliffhanger ending with Cooper, unlike the last episode. He says the others are leaving, and he's going with them, and we'll just have to wait to see why. I want you to know I made a strong case for you. I told them that you were a good person. Reliable, smart, honest. And then they told me who you were and what you had done. Let's just say forgiveness isn't one of their strong suits. I will remind you, what she did was kill her abusive father. Now, how did Tom put it? Oh yeah, hey others, you see this glass house you're living in? How about I get you some stones? And he even refuses to tell her where Jack, Saeed, and Danielle are just to be a dick. Back at the beach, Hurley tells Sawyer that everyone is going to take a vote on whether to kick him out of the camp, so he might want to make amends. Oh good, another worthless B-plot that just takes time away from the parts someone might conceivably care about. Seriously, stop doing this! The others all put on gas masks, and then they throw a smoke grenade into Kate's room that knocks her out. We're the good guys, Michael. She wakes up in the jungle and finds herself handcuffed to Juliet. But who could care about it when we can watch Sawyer making an ass of himself? Okay, enough of that. Back to the real story. Juliet wakes up and seems just as confused at the situation. Kate suggests they go back. What? They did this to us. Why would we go back? You say they like you didn't lock me in a cage and watch me break rocks all day. I never thought I'd say this, at least in regards to Kate, but you go, girl. It's so refreshing when someone actually is willing to call the others on their bullshit, and it's a shame it doesn't happen more often. Why would they handcuff you to me and then drag us all the way out into the jungle? Ben has a thing for mind games. It's really amazing how many plot holes that line would have patched up if they just stuck with it. It would have been a stupid explanation, but that's still an improvement over no explanation. So Kate and Juliet are now pretty much doing their own version of the 39 steps. Heh, <laughs> you thought I was gonna go with the Defiant ones, didn't you? Well, I went with the quality movie. Juliet accuses Kate of ruining Jack's chance to get off the island. Really? How do you figure? Because from what I saw, it certainly wasn't her who blew up the submarine right in front of you, I might add, so you have no excuse for thinking differently. Kate gives this piece of idiocy exactly the response it deserves by punching the crap out of Juliet and dislocating her shoulder. But this is lost, and the others are supposed to be the good guys, so we're supposed to see this as a bad thing. Morons. Hillary shows up, and Kate introduces Juliet to the tried-and-true hiding-in-a-banyan-tree strategy. Then more wackiness with Sawyer that even contradicts another pointless B-plot where he has trouble with Aaron despite an earlier episode showing that his voice was the one thing that could get Aaron to stop crying. Then Juliet guilt-trips Kate into fixing her shoulder, and oddly enough she doesn't bring up that Kate is the one that hurt it, but again goes to the complete bullshit well that it's Kate's fault that the sub got blown up. But that's these writers for you. 
Juliet tells Kate the real reason Jack told her not to rescue him is that she broke his heart. Seriously? You're doing this? There is nothing between these people. Nothing to latch on to. It continues to baffle me how these writers could do such a great job with Jin and Son, who were added at the last minute before the show began taping, and Desmond and Penny, who have had hardly any screen time, and then drop the ball this badly on what's supposed to be the main romantic plotline. I really have no idea how this happened. And it gets worse as Juliet starts listing out everything she knows about Jack that Kate doesn't, as now they're trying to do some more to make another love square. But all this really does is point out how little Kate knows about Jack, and hence why we have no reason to root for them to hook up. Hillary shows up again, and they come to the brain mush fence, forcing Juliet to reveal that she's had a key to the handcuffs this whole time as she goes to turn the fence on. Hillary is stopped by the fence, and one could wonder why he doesn't just go over it, but I'll be nice and assume he just wants them to think the fence can stop him for now. Then Juliet explains to Kate that the others left her behind, so she set up this whole thing to try to assimilate into the camp and not be alone. Kate also gives this exactly what it deserves. Nothing. The Sawyer plot comes to an end when he finds out there wasn't going to be a vote and he was being nice to everyone for nothing, and you can't even hear me anymore, can you? So screw all that. Kate and Juliet make it back to the village and go to get Jack and Saeed. There's this weird thing where it seems like Jack was supposed to wake up swinging and push Kate into the wall, when what we actually see is her just sort of throwing herself back into it. That could have been directed better. And then she apologizes for wrecking Jack's chance to leave, so in case you were thinking we weren't supposed to agree with Juliet on that, yeah, suck on it. Finally, Jack throws his weight around against Saeed and insists they take Juliet with them back to camp. Thanks, I was starting to forget what a whiny bitch he can be. My score for Left Behind is 6 out of 10. Kinda surprising given that I have fond memories of it. And the stuff with Kate and Juliet is still a lot of fun, but the absolutely disgusting pro-domestic abuse message, plus the nonsense of our being expected to agree that this is all Kate's fault, really pull it down to barely above average. And of course, there's the umpteenth use of a completely pointless B-plot, which is looking more and more desperate all the time.